Hi guys, it's Crystal Caldwell here, your Crossroads Weekday Preschool Director. I am absolutely thrilled that we will be back in school on Monday and we cannot wait to see your smiling faces. This is a part one of a two part video. This part will go over our parent handbook. Um, I have emailed that out to everyone. If you could just click on the doc and download, you can just read along with it um, online or you can print out your own copy. Um, and if you'd like, I can also provide a hard copy. Um, this is our just all of our rules, our handbook of how to have a successful year. Um, I'm not going to read it all word for word because I believe that you know how to read. <laughs> um, and here we start off with our mission statement and um, our values and um, just what our school is about. And you already know because you decided to enroll at our school and we've already had those conversations. Um, but in here, this is like all the nitty gritty stuff of, you know, what type of curriculum we have. So if you can't remember and you're trying to tell someone about it, it has on here about how it's pinnacle. Um, we have our admissions policy on there, so you can read through that. Um, our financial policy, and it says, you know, that um, tuition is due at the beginning of every month. Uh, you will get a reminder um, on that, and you'll have a couple of different options on returning your payment. Either we can do um, automatic withdrawal from your account, we can do credit card payments that are also automatic, or um, you can send home check or cash in the envelope that we provide for your child. Um, just please make sure if there's something going on and there is um, a need or something's going on with all the stuff that's happening lately, come in contact with me um, or my assistant director and let us know because we would really hate um, for you guys to miss out on something um, just because maybe you'll have to be late on a payment or maybe you need to split it up. But just, just come to us and let us um, help you out on that. Um, tuition is calculated over the months that we are here. And so I know that sometimes we're only here for um, a part of a month and sometimes we're here for a full month um, but our teachers are here and they need to get paid too so the tuition is among um, those months there um, if you are going to be out of town or you're going to be leaving for let's say a vacation for a week you still pay for that month of tuition um, and that is something that's um, it keeps our preschool going um, attendance policy same thing it's very important for your child to be in school every day that they're assigned. Um, I know that it seems, um, you know, it's preschool and they can skip and, you know, go wherever, but it really is beneficial for them to be there every day and have that consistency. And um, so they just don't miss out on the fun things that we do. So our um, attendance policy is very, very, um, we want you to be, we want you to be there. We don't want you to miss out. Um, and please call us and let us know if, if your child is sick or something happened because we would love to pray for you and help you in any way possible. Um, again, with attendance, we also follow Coweta County Schools. So um, in inclement weather, if they are canceled for snow or anything like that, we will also be um, canceled as well. Um, parent visitation. This has been, this is a little different this year because of COVID-19. Um, typically we are, we love to have parents in the classroom. We love for you to come in and read. We love for you to participate in all the activities we have, um, during the year. But right now with restrictions of COVID-19, we are kind of limiting what we can do in the classroom by bringing in outside people. Um, if you would ever like to come in and observe, like maybe you have questions and you would just, you, you know, you want to be able to observe your child contact me or and the, the teacher and um, you can always stand out in the hallway and observe but it'd be great if we had a heads up so we can um, know that you are coming and also uh, we'll have you sign in and um, all that jazz our health policy um, a lot of it's staying the same um, and then there's some that's a little different we've always had our 24-hour policy um, if you're sick and you don't feel well please stay home um, and you know, it says if you've had any of these over the last 24 hours. Now we're also gonna extend that to um, family, like current family that's living in a home. Um, if one child that's in pre-K has a child, another a brother or sister in the one-year-old classroom and they have a fever, both of those children need to stay home. Um, on here we have acute cold, fever, croup, coughing, sneezing, sore, 
a sore throat or inflamed throat, earache, runny nose, infected eyes, nausea, vomiting or diarrhea, skin rash, infection, anything that could be contagious. Um, if a child gets sent home from school um, with us, before they are allowed to return, we need a note just stating um, that the child is able to return to school. Um, they need to be symptom free for at least 24 hours before they can return to the preschool. Um, if something happens during the day, let's say, you know, someone comes in and you are feeling fine and then I know, I know this happens, you get sick in the middle of the day. If that happens at any point, your child will be removed and isolated from the other students. Um, and that's in my office and that's, you know, to keep them comfortable and to keep a spread of whatever might be happening. Um, and just, just let us know they're not allowed to come back um, until we have a doctor's note. So we just, we have to be very cautious this year. And as we've let things slide in the past, um, this is something that can't, that can't slide this year. And I, I hope that all of you um, completely understand that. And with that also being said, you know, social distancing and, um, you know, cleanliness, we are a preschool. So no matter how hard we clean or anything, the kids always catch something just because they're kids. And um, we just wanna make sure that you understand that as parents, that you are signing up for preschool where if we, even if we try to social distance them, they're going to want to dance together and play together and they're gonna hug each other as much as we're gonna to try to get them not to, that's just the reality of children this age. Um, if you are uncomfortable with any of that, um, I'm gonna tell you right now, just please go ahead and either stay home or um, whatever will make you more comfortable because this is, what preschool's like. We can't, you know, keep them all six feet apart and not touch. Um, some things that I can tell you that will make you feel a little better is we are sanitizing everything. Um, we have a, a great um, organic chemical that we're using. I don't know if that makes sense, but spray that we're using where you wipe, you let it set for like five minutes and then you clean it off and it disinfects the surfaces. We are, um, any adult that comes into the building, parents uh, need to wear a mask and we are taking temperatures and random temperature checks also throughout the day. And we are just trying, it's all new to us. So we are trying our best to make sure that you're comfortable and our teachers are comfortable as well. Uh, moving right along to our discipline policy. Um, I understand again that they're little children and they are still expected to follow the teacher's rules of the classroom. and. Teachers will go over these in the first, you know, week, two weeks of school to know that set up the expectations for the child. Um, children are given many chances. Um, usually before I have ever heard of anything happening, chance after chance after chance was given in the classroom. So some steps on here of, you know, how we handle that. Um, if you have any questions about that, you may definitely contact me and we can go over it. Um, our next part is drop off and pick up procedures. Now, some of this is going to be different again this year um, because we have gotten um, an elevator installed on the side where we did have car line. So our car line will be moving again back to its original position in front of the building in the little um, horseshoe shape. So um, that'll be fun and different. Um, and car line is for our three-year-olds and our four-year-olds. That will start at 8.45 in the morning so that it allows time for the kids to get back to the classroom around nine o'clock so they can start learning. Um, we ask that you do not, do not, do not send your child down the hallway before 9 a.m. This time is so precious to our teachers and they are trying to get their classrooms ready. They're trying to get things set up and it just messes everybody up. Um, so just make sure you plan enough time to get there and just to be on time for that. Um, we, this year for our first week, again, um, we're gonna do walk-in. So you'll walk in and walk out and pick up your child that way. Car line will start the following week. Um, we're asking that all parents wear masks, that no one goes into the classroom. We want you to do a hug and release and that'll be easier for you and for your babies, I promise. Um, 
so yeah. And then after that, when Carlin does start, our ages two, um, babies through twos, will be walked in and picked up every day. Um, if you have any questions again about that, please contact me um, and I can get you more information on that. Um, again, there are curbside, our drop off and pick up procedures. When you are dropping off your child, please make sure that they already have their shoes on. They have whatever breakfast they were eating put away um, and they're just ready to go. I know a lot of times, you know, we have kids pull up and then it's like, oh, let's get dressed for the day. We want our car line to be very efficient and very uh, quick. So number one rule is do not get out of your car. Don't get out of your car. You can lean back and you can unbuckle your child, but please do not get out of the car. And that is for pickup, uh, drop off and pickup. When a parent gets out of a car, number one, it's dangerous and someone could get hurt. But number two, it really slows our lineup. Um, if you are um, picking up your child in car line, again, please don't get out of the car. I know um, a lot of these kids can't buckle themselves. Um, we are only allowed to put them in the car and we are not allowed to buckle them. So if you could, please don't get out of the car, but let your child get in the car, sit in their seat, and just pull forward into a parking space where you can stop, get out, and buckle your child. I promise you, it makes things go so much faster if um, we do that. Please make sure that you're here before 12. Um, that way we can move our line along. And I understand that sometimes you get uh, stopped in traffic or stuck somewhere. Um, please give us a call as soon as you know that you'll be late so that we know to expect that and to let your child know so that they aren't um, distraught at pickup time. Everybody that's in the car rider line will be given a name tag and that is the tag we need you to use um, to put outside of your car, out on your car so that we can call names and again it moves much more efficiently. Um, we have some miscellaneous tips on here and these are just again some things, um, the biggest ones on here, you know, talk to your child, get them excited about school. When they see that you're excited, they're gonna be so thrilled to go because they're gonna know it's happy and fun. If you're sad and, you know, my baby's growing up, and, you know, that way in front of your child, they're gonna start saying, hmm, I don't know if this is gonna be so much fun if mom's crying. So talk to your child, talk to them, get them excited about learning and making new friends and having a new teacher. And I, it's just, it's, I promise it'll make it a lot better. Um, make sure they go ahead and have a um, have their breakfast before they come. Um, and please, for do not send any kind of gum or candy or little toys. I know that sometimes they're so stuck on a certain toy and they want to bring it in so bad, but it causes distractions. And then if it's something that's lost. Um, it kind of comes back onto us that we lost something. But um, so just let's keep it easy and keep all that stuff at home. Um, we need everything labeled. We need your backpack labeled. We need your cups, um, change of clothes, diapers, anything that is your child's, please have it labeled. That way we know exactly who it belongs to, what bag it goes into, and there's no question about it. it makes things a lot easier. Um, dress your child appropriately. Um, we do go on the playground if it is nice and sunny outside or not too cold and not too hot. So keep that in mind with your child when you're getting them dressed in the morning, what shoes they're wearing. Um, tennis shoes are probably the best and play clothes because we paint and we sometimes fall in the mud. So just make sure it's, you're sitting them with stuff that they can have fun and play with, uh, play in. And we really just want to say, you know, no flip flops if possible, because that is um, a very big hazard on our playground. Um, please keep your, your child in diapers until they are completely potty trained. Um, this is something that we've had to deal with multiple times. Um, our threes and fours are required to be potty trained before they start. Um, I have on here our rule of thumb. If the child can go two weeks at home without an accident of any kind, it should be safe to try it at CWB. So it's great if your child is hasn't had an accident all weekend, please do not send them in underwear on Monday. <laughs> that makes it very difficult for us. So 
you know, keep working with your child and we're also going to be working with your child. So please let, um, if they're in the two year olds, please let your teacher know if you are potty training so we can reinforce that at home, um, in the classroom. Um, make sure that if you've moved or you've changed phone numbers or anything that you please let us know as soon as possible. That way we can get in touch with you. Um, people will get mad when they didn't get an email or a phone call and I find out they moved and I'm like, well, I'm not, you know, I do what I can do. So please make sure you update your information if possible um, if, you, if you move. Um, we have an updated um, delayed start calendar um, that's also in this packet. It has our days of school and our off days. So all of that is um, in there also. I would encourage you to take this and um, maybe put it up on your refrigerator or whatever spot. Um, the next form that you have to fill out is our um, internet and technology uh, use agreement. Um, this just says that, you know, we have, um, we have a few Kindles that we use in the classroom for reinforcement of certain, um, you know, letter sounds or letter recognition or tracing for their fine motor skills. Um, we just bring those things in when, um, when we just try are trying something different to help them out. I promise you, your child is not on a device unless they need to be just as a, you know, a precaution there. We are having the children, they'll be in a visible area and the max they would probably be on it is five to 10 minutes. Um, but this here is just saying that it is okay for the children to view something that's on the internet um, and that they're gonna be monitored during that. So if you can just write your student's name and their and your signature, that would be great. And all these papers that need to be filled out and signed, if you could please bring those back on the first day of school, you can send it to your um, your child's backpack, or if you'd like, you can drop it off um, at the main office. The next one is our medical release form. This has um, you know where you do or do not give us permission to seek medical treatment for your child. Um, this also has our media and picture release. So we're allowed to take your photo and that's for our website or for um, a lot of teachers have their own Facebook pages that are only for the families of that um, class. And just make sure it's okay that they share photos of your child um, and anything. A lot of times teachers will text pictures. And so if you fill that out that they do have permission, um, you need to check the yes and sign. And the next one is phone number and email release. A lot of times um, they'll maybe a room mom and you're just saying it's okay if you give out my phone number or email address. Um, and down here also, it's our safe, harmless agreement and covenant not to sue. And these things are on here, you know, saying that we will not be liable for um, loss, damage, injury, or liability of any kind to your child. Um, and there's a place for you to put your child's name and to sign and date. And this also has to be notarized. Um, I am a notary. Um, so if you come in, um, I can help you with that. Uh, there's also notaries at the library and other places. Um, the last paper to turn in is our parent agreement. This states that you read the handbook or you watched it with me and you kind of went through and you um, are, you understand all the guidelines. And that when you sign this, that you are agreeing that you understand all the guidelines. Um, so you just sign and date that. And then right below, there's a notice of exemption. Um, here is, you know, I, and there's a blank, I acknowledge that I have been informed that this program is not a licensed child care facility. I also understand this program is not required to be licensed by the Georgia Department of Early Care and Learning if this program is exempt from state licensure requirements. Um, this is just saying that we are a exempt program. Uh, we are not funded by the state in any way. We are a private school. Um, so that is just your acknowledgement that um, we are exempt from licensure. Um, again, that's just our quick rundown of our handbook. Please print that out. Please make sure you get those pages print out and you can bring them to school on Monday.